Hello, blessed be everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Sandra and this is the Mystery Witch School. Today we were talking about oh, the moon. I think I've done a live once before about the moon I'm, and a few videos about the, the full moon and new moon. So I just wanted to talk more about the moon since we just recently, last week, had a super blue moon in Pisces so I thought I would talk about the moon I probably should have talked about it before we had the blue moon but anyway I, I wasn't that well last week so we're going to do it now welcome to those of you who are watching the replay and which is probably most of you I know that I tend to watch replays rather than go on things live and if you are watching the replay you can still join in on the comments remember there's uh the super chat there as well and super thanks if you want to uh contribute to to the channel hi Jenna how are you and to say hello if you are watching live uh, to say hello in the chat and uh, feel free to comment about <clears throat> your own experiences and uh, anything that you want to uh, say in the chat for those of you who are new to mystery witch school welcome to mystery witch school welcome to the youtube channel youtube is my main social media platform there is i do have a mystery witch school page on facebook and also i'm on linkedin under sandra inman but mostly it is youtube and facebook that i tend to use these days um what do we do here we talk about all things wicca witchcraft magic and tarot as well as shadow work which really is just getting to know yourself and who you truly are it, it doesn't have to be this um you know dark thing a lot of people make it out to be it's really just us getting back to base and i believe that witchcraft uh, that through this path we can become more in touch with who we truly are and explore more of who we are and what we're doing here and that we have we're here on this planet to create and that's what magic is for magic is for creating and experiencing the things in life that we want to experience it's that simple hello swak fan hello raspberry moon linda hi linda good evening and so if you are new to the channel if you want to know where to start your witchcraft practice as well but you just don't know like where do I start what's the best place to start is in what do I learn first and then when do I learn all of the differences with uh, magic sabbats moons all of that stuff I have a free video called how to start your witchcraft practice it's on my website mysterywitchschool.com there's also a link in the description field below this video that just gives you an outline and a bit of a blueprint on the sorts of things to do when you're first starting out they're just the real basic uh, form of modern western witchcraft anyway and uh, how to pace yourself along the way so for those of you in the chat who might want to go and find where that is it's on my website I'll also put a link in the chat as well to that free video how to start your witchcraft practice it only goes for about I think 30 minutes or something so it's not a long 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 master class and uh, that will just help you get an idea of how to how to pace yourself for the next 12 months <laughs> of your learning Mystery Witch School, we're also training here. So I also have courses on Wicca and Witchcraft uh, and I also have courses on Tarot as well as a shadow work or that inner exploration where we're using some modalities as well as magic and ritual to connect more with who we are. So they're the main things that are going on at the moment at Mystery Witch School. Mystery Witch School 101 Academy, which is the... Uh, learning wicker and witchcraft it's a 12-month course there's the wheels of empowerment which is that in that exploration into yourself and the shadow work through the chakras and then there's the tarot course called the confident tarot reader which will get you reading tarot using your intuition and your knowledge so combining both knowledge of what the cards mean but really trying to just to show you how easy it actually can be to tap into your intuition when you're reading the cards all of that information is on my YouTube channel as well as the Mystery Witch School uh, website. 
mysterywitchschool.com. Okay, so now that YouTube has got everything out to everyone, I can start talking about the actual theme of today, which is lunar witches and uh, the, the moon cycles. Okay, so hello to everybody who is joining us at the moment. I have heard the term lunar witch uh, sometimes in Facebook groups where people will um, really specify, I guess, what area of witchcraft they, they really feel that they're working in. And some witches do call themselves lunar witches. And I'm assuming that's because really they're working with the cycles of the moon more than anything else. Uh, it's in this common in this day and age we do tend to like to put a pigeonhole ourselves a lot uh, which can be helpful uh, in some ways um, for other people it's not so helpful so if you are, if you do identify as a lunar witch uh, tell me more about what you do because I don't know enough about all of these small um, pigeonholes of different different witches that we have in this modern day because there's, there's a lot uh, but when it comes to the moon, I think all witches pretty much work with the moon to a large degree. We work with the cycles of the moon. We connect to our spirituality via the cycles of the moon. We connect to the feminine energy via the moon as well, the goddess energy via the moon. We we tend to just assume the moon is just a part of witchcraft. <laughs> it's not like necessarily all there is to witchcraft, but it is simply a part of witchcraft. I teach a whole module on the moon <laughs> in the Mystery Witch School 101 Academy, and uh, it is a big part of the craft. And while we also have solar cycles with the Sabbaths, and I've talked about the solar cycles and how you, if you're more solar oriented, you might want to on a yearly basis sync yourself up with the cycles of the sun you can do that every month of course with the cycles of the moon so we can see ourselves as cyclical beings and nature is cyclical in all ways the moon honors also the menstrual cycle as well so that's connecting it uh, very much to that rebirth and birthing and uh, fertility and uh, times of non-fertility where I think humans are probably really the only species that are able to really be able to you know govern when uh, we have children and when we don't simply because of that cycle so it does put humans in a in a very uh, interesting position and uh, there's a lot of conjecture and a, a lot of um, theory out there about where we actually really did come from. But the moon is something that has always um, been celebrated, I think, throughout history as being connected to the feminine. Sometimes there's lunar gods as well, uh, but the feminine seems to be a very strong connection simply because of that menstrual cycle. So when we're talking about lunar cycles, we've got a lot of different cycles that the moon goes through. We've got different types of moons uh, and we have uh, the moon not just you know, happening every month, but we've also got special sorts of moons too, which we've just had. So we've got super moons, we've got micro moons or mini moons, we've got uh, we've got blue moons, we've got she moons, we've got uh, the eclipses as well as the the full, the waxing, the waning, and the new and dark moons. So there's a lot of there's a lot going on with the moon. Okay. Hi, Estade. Estade says, um, is working with the sun equally as important as the moon or is the moon more important or is it the balance? I would say one's not more important than the other. It's it's about simply seeing everything as a part of nature. So whilst the moon's working more in a shorter space of time, so it's happening roughly every 28 days, so the cycle's a much short, shorter cycle, the solar cycles happening over a longer period of time. So that's just noticing how you've got cycles within cycles and cycles within cycles and within cycles. So it's just a way of honouring nature in the many different ways that nature 
uh, functions. So one isn't more important than the other. I think the moon is given has been given a lot more emphasis simply because of the fact that we're moving out of that patriarchal era and so it's about rediscovering the feminine again and, and connecting with the feminine again. So that's probably just why it tends to have a little bit more prominence. Um, and the moon with magic because of its connection with water, the water energy and water being emotion as well. So we're looking at these things that perhaps 100 years ago we weren't looking at so much. So it's just coming back to that and trying to reestablish a connection with it again. When you stand at the edge of the beach, you appreciate how powerful the moon is. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So the moon works, of course, with the water energy. So it's it's not only is it in charge of, you know, the tides, it's when we're 70% water, we've all, we're also influenced by the moon too. And you may find that at different times of the month, you may feel different emotionally. And because of the astrological significance of the moon, when the moon goes through uh, signs, like every about every two and a half days, the moon's changing astrological signs. So just recently with the big blue super moon that we had, it was in Pisces. So for those of you who have Pisces quite significant in your chart, like your sun, if you're a sun Pisces or a rising Pisces, then, or even if your north node is in Pisces, uh, you may have noticed that there may have been more things going on for you emotionally. You might have been more in touch with feeling uh, and noticing those sorts of watery changes or being being more watery in that sense of emotional and tapping more into emotion and intuition. Uh, maybe having more psychic visions if you have visions or just being more psychic and intuitive in whatever way that your um, psychism manifests. You may also find that sometimes with um, with Pisces energy, because you've got that Neptunian influence, that sometimes you have to be careful of what's real and what's imagined because the flip side or the shadow side, I guess, of that energy is that sometimes you can think, you can feel something's real but it's actually the imagination that's going overboard and sometimes you've got to look at what's illusion and what's actually perception so that can be all what the Pisces uh, moon could have just recently um, brought up for people particularly if you've got Pisces significant in your astrological chart and all of the full moons when they fall into a sign they're going to really emphasize the energy of that sign <laughs> so you may find that when the full moon is in your sign whether that be your sun sign or your rising sign or north node that you notice something you notice things going on depending on what that sign is we'll start with the full moon seeing um we've been talking about the full moon the full moon of course is when the moon is directly opposing the sun so it's reflecting the energy of the sun so you've got that solar energy being reflected back upon the earth and that's why we see the full moon as being the most powerful time of the lunar cycle because it's reflecting that light of the sun and so we can utilize that energy for our spell work and whilst astrologers see the full moon as being a time more of reflection and preparing for the waning cycle, which is we we can do that too, of course, but we see that because the moon is so full, we can utilize that energy to do magic that's perhaps we want quicker results, like we want a result within the month, uh, or if we want to put more energy into something, the full moon is a really good time to do that because that's when the moon is at her height of the energy and full moons have, have always been a time to of feeling into that wonderful energy of wanting to connect more with nature you can see more at night with a full moon of course because it's lighting up everything so where things have been dark outside you can go outside uh, if you live away or you happen to be away from cities where there's a lot of electrical lights the full moon will just light everything up and you can get this beautiful hues of, of different sorts of uh, indigo colours and, and dark blues and uh, it can be a very beautiful experience to be in nature under a full moon 
as you see all of the different uh, shadows and shapes of things. At the beach, if you're standing at the beach and you see the full moon rising up over the ocean and the reflection of that moon in the water, it's pretty amazing and pretty powerful. And being in nature at a full moon is a really powerful place to be if you're doing spell work. You can really manifest fast if you're in nature doing work under a full moon. Uh, I have found that uh, if you've got other elements working with you, so not maybe if you are at the water, for example, at a beach or at a lake or even a creek or a stream, and you're working with the water element, uh, that can be enhanced. Uh, the wind, uh, working with air, spirits of air, uh, that can be enhanced even at a full moon as well. If you're working with fire, so a campfire or, or candlelight, it seems to be more powerful at that time. Or if you're working uh, on a, when you're doing with, working with the earth, so if you're working on a mountain, like on top of a mountain or something, or up on top of a gorge or something, you can really get the, the power of these, these elements with the moon. Your, your magic's going to work pretty fast if you're, if you're really um, focusing and you know what your intention is. So the full moon for us witches is a really big, special time. And when I was in my covens in the past, that was when we would get together every month and do ritual was at the full moon. Okay, I'm just going to read some more comments. Um, germination energy. Seed germination. Yes, absolutely. Gardeners will know the cycles of the moon because you'll be gardening by the moon <laughs> and also by the solar cycles as well. Sun, moon, and Mercury in Pisces. Wow. <laughs> so that's a, a stellium there, a trifecta. <laughs> Growing up, my grandparents didn't do anything without knowing which moon to work with, from planting and watering and even going to the dentist. Yeah, growing hair. If you want to grow your hair, there's certain times of the moon to do that, to cut your hair, <laughs> all those kinds of things. Um, and if you think of it, the growing cycle the um, plateauing cycle the waning cycle uh, it all relates to to growth and the moon has got such a strong influence on the water and on the soil yet you know, what how when the water comes up through the soil because the moon's pulling on that so that's why it has an effect on plants is to do with its connection to the water in the soil and also in the plants uh, and the light as well uh, does your work with the moon and witchcraft affect how you interpret the moon in tarot? I think it does. Uh, when it comes to the traditional meanings of the moon and the tarot, they're pretty, they're not really good. It's all about being delusional and illusions and deception and, and everything. And I think that that's got a certain element to that if you're looking at extremes of, um, if you're looking at the shadow side, I suppose, of that energy. But I think a lot of that is also to do with the background, um, the, the Christian background and the connection of, of the moon to, to witchcraft and to those things which in our culture, in Western culture, has been a, considered a bad thing for quite a long time. As witches, when we look at the moon card, yes, if the moon is negatively aspected, those are most likely the meanings but when the moon is positively aspected we start to look at the positive aspects of of these things uh such as intuition connecting to your intuition connecting to your emotions being able to understand if your emotions you are having an emotional reaction to something uh where is that coming from because a lot of the time we can be overreacting to things emotionally because our belief system is causing us to do that so the moon can be a time of reflection or a card that comes up about needing to reflect on your psyche, needing to go into the shadow and, and see what you're thinking and what, what your beliefs are about things that might be causing um, an emotional reaction. It's about getting to know yourself and to look within, look within what you can't see, look within the shadows. It's it's that that. It is a passive energy, meaning that it's not active. It's about going inwards and it's about reflecting and also receiving. And cycles, 
So the moon for witches in the tarot can indicate that there's a cycle going on or this is part of a cycle or it's part of a pattern uh, and maybe you need to look at the cycle or you need to look at the pattern, where has this happened before and, and those things. So it does affect, I think, how we interpret the tarot compared to maybe how people in the past have worked with the tarot moon card. Okay. Okay. Fish bite is off uh, due to the full blue moon too. Right, yeah, so it affects everything. So that's that's the full moon. <laughs> With the blue moon, uh, the blue moon is the second. There's two ways of seeing the blue moon. Originally, I think the more traditional approach of a blue moon was that if you take a solstice and an equinox or an equinox and a solstice, so that period in between solstices and equinoxes, there's usually three full moons within that period. And when there's a fourth full moon in that period, the third one is considered a blue moon. And that seems to be more the origin of blue moons. Uh, blue moons, when you're looking at it that way, occur probably roughly every two to three years. So they're rare. And you get that saying once in a blue moon uh, for uh, possibly that reason. Uh, there's other theories about where the blue moon um, term blue moon comes from because people would assume a blue moon would mean that the moon is blue <laughs> as in colour. <laughs> and apparently that has happened uh, with volcanic eruptions. It has happened in the past with volcanic eruptions where the I guess the chemicals in the air or whatever it is in the atmosphere has actually caused the moon to look uh, blue. And I think that happened once back in the late 1800s where that happened. So the term blue moon could have come from there as well. Uh, the most common way of definition for a blue moon these days is that it is the second full moon in a calendar month. So in August, we had two full moons in a calendar month. And so that's another way that uh, people will define a blue moon. Astrologically, um, you could say that the blue moon can emphasize the energies of the sign that it's in. So in this case, Pisces, it being a super moon, so the moon being really close to the earth uh, with a super moon means that it's definitely really emphasizing uh, the energy of the astrological sign that it's in, uh, whether it's a blue moon or not, it's still going to be very powerful energy. So that's why Pisces was really highlighted um, <laughs> last week. Uh, so that's really all it is about a blue moon. If you're wanting to do magic on a blue moon, it, it's um, just working with those astrological energies and focusing on the, the astrology of the lunation itself. Um, and using that and utilizing the energy of the moon, it's there's nothing special that you need to do for a blue moon, it is a full moon, so you just do what you do for a full moon. Uh, you don't necessarily have to wait to do magic for a blue moon, it's a full moon, so do full moon magic and celebrate the fact that it's a rarer moon <laughs> uh, and just get on with doing your full moon magic. It doesn't have to be, it's not necessarily a, a special, special thing. You can still do mag your full moon magic. You don't have to wait for a blue moon to do powerful magic. Okay, if not possible to do magic exactly at a full moon, is it better to do magic slightly before or after? So the general rule of thumb that I was taught was to do, you could do magic the day before the full moon and the day of the full moon and the day after the full moon. So you've got three days that you can do your magic. Other people will say that there's three days leading up to the moon and three days leading away from the full moon. So, you, it, I mean, the moon is getting more powerful the closer to full it is. So if you're wanting to do magic where you're really wanting to bring things in and you're wanting things to happen in a growing way, then aim for a, three days before the full moon get as close to the moon as you can full moon as you can but you've got you could you could start within three days before that full moon if you can't do it any sooner 
if the magic is more to do with um, letting things go <laughs> or wanting to clear away something or wrap something up then and if you're wanting that full moon energy to help with that then I'd be going after the full moon uh, so it's you, you're catching its waning phase and the themes of the waning phase thank you not queen thank you so much for for the uh, the super chat so that is the full moon when the moon, after the moon is full, it starts to wane. So after the with the waning energy, we tend to use more for clearing things away. So that's where you might look at banishing magic. Uh, you might be working with uh, anything that you need to wrap up or tie up. Like if you need something finished <laughs> soon, you might want to start doing your magic at that time to to finish things off because this is where the moon's starting to lose the energy, so it's not as powerful. But it's also waning, so you've got the theme, the correspondent theme of waning and closing and finishing. So it's like that theme of finishing for the moon because the moon is starting to finish down into the dark moon cycle. And the closer you get to the new moon in that cycle, uh, the stronger that theme of wrapping things up and cleaning up and banishing is going to be right up until you get to about three days before the new moon when you're in your dark moon phase. And the dark moon can also occur, uh, so the new moon and dark moon can also occur twice in a calendar month as well. So when that happens, when a you get a new moon twice in a month, that's called a she moon, and that comes from the Gaelic uh, word she, and it connects to the fae or the fairy realm. So we call it a fae moon or a fairy moon or a she moon, and that is the second new moon within a calendar month. Again, it's a new moon, so treat it as a new moon, <laughs> as you would any new moon. Some would say that uh, the the second new moon in a month is the reflection in the in the fairy realm of the new moon. Uh, so a lot of people like to work with fairy magic or just connecting to uh, the fae, various different earth spirits uh, during that time. So it's uh, a time of maybe connecting if you do work uh, within nature and work with nature spirits uh, to maybe celebrate uh, that that connection at the new moon particularly if it is a she moon as well okay dark moon versus new moon so the dark moon phase is a time really of again you've got the shadows so it's dark you if you go outside and you don't have any lights anywhere it's going to be dark you're going to probably need to use a flashlight or something to see where you're going <laughs> so that's why it's called the dark moon you can't see the moon uh, because it is actually conjunct with the sun, so you're not able to see it. <laughs> and so it's not uh, transmitting any energy either. It's not reflecting anything. So it, it doesn't really have much in the way of energy. So magic, they would say, particularly the dark moon, is probably not going to be as powerful as magic if you're working lunar magic as it would be at a full moon. So hence it's generally the tradition to not do magic at that time to use that time for divination, reflection, planning, what you're going to do for the month ahead when the moon starts to wax again and what your plans are. So it's a really good time of just having a holiday and turning more inwards, looking at where, do, where am I going for the next lunar month, uh, what maybe are your solar cycle goals uh, and just getting back in touch with you again and taking a bit of a witch's holiday at the dark moon. <laughs> the new moon, the new moon in modern times, of course, because we've got, we can know exactly what time the moon starts to wax again. So at that time is when we would say the new moon is. But if you're looking in, at the sky to get an idea of when the new moon is, it's usually a few days later. So it's when you start to see that little bit of sliver of um, silver in the sky is more when the energies of the new moon are there to start to work with. And at the new moon, that's when we're working with growing, where we're really planting. So it's planting seeds and 
contemplating, okay, what what do I want to grow? How may how do I want to grow it? Planting those seeds. So you'd be doing doing magic or planning to do your magic at that stage because if you are doing magic for growing anything or for trying to manifest something to come to you, then it's good to do that as the moon starts to pick up a bit and get a little bit more energy going. So within that that first week between the dark moon and the first quarter, you could be planting seeds and maybe gathering materials to do your spell work and maybe starting your spell closer to when it's starting to be a little bit more prominent um, in the sky. But there's nothing wrong with doing new moon magic right at the new moon to grow things and to start things. And the closer you get, of course, to the full moon in that cycle means the stronger the moon energy is going to be. So it really depends on any any time within that two weeks of waxing, you can be doing growth spells and spells to bring things to you, to uh, things that are going to give you a sense of expansion at that time because that's an expansive energy rather than the waning moon between the full moon and the new moon being a more contracting kind of energy. Okay. Why do a lot of adepts seem to have potent results using the Psalms based on specific intentions with candle magic? Uh, what is it about the Psalms? The Psalms are... They're, they're basically, you could say they're old-fashioned incantations. Uh, they're spells, essentially. Uh, they may not, may not make a lot of sense these days, but they are actually spells. So if you find some of the Psalms and you look, in, look at them metaphorically, because that's what they are, they're metaphors, they're, they're actually spells. They're, they're ways of giving a metaphor to an intention. So that's why uh, Raymond Buckland, for example, in his first candle magic book used the Psalms because it is, they are actually um, manifestation tools. It's just it's done in a particular language <laughs> uh, that was a particular time, particular place and particular people. And if you spend time looking at these things metaphorically, you can find the magic in them. And magic works really lovely when you work with metaphor too and poetry um it's a great way to work with magic because the metaphor will actually work uh, for you so that's why the psalms are often used um particularly in ceremonial magic and the, the types of magic that take their roots from the judaic christian um tradition and the kabbalistic tradition and all of that which is more rooted in the abrahamic uh religions and the abrahamic mysticism Okay, would you look at look at the house where the moon falls in your chart when crafting a spell? You could certainly do that um, to see where the moon falls. If the moon is a really powerful time would be when there's a conjunction between your natal moon and the moon and that would happen every month. <laughs> so find out when that is. The moon in your astrological chart is significant. So when you're looking at your astrology, uh, say you're getting, um, you're finding out what's going to happen this month astrologically, it's good to good practice to look up your 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 sun sign and your moon sign because your moon sign is going to give you a sense of um, emotionally what's going might be going on and things that might be affecting you emotionally so it's important to look at your rising sign your sun sign and your moon sign when you're looking at how things your predictions astrologically for the month and those predictions are just guidelines for what the themes are in the month and where the energies are situated it's not like a an absolute Thing with astrology it's not like you you've got to uh be terrified of your astrology it's just this is what you've these are the things that you've got working at the moment or not maybe challenging at the moment and it just gives you a bit of a map to sort of work out how you're going to navigate your way through that time and uh if you look at those three things in your chart it will help you navigate a bit more 
it almost seems like working with the moon, psalms and candle magic is all that's needed for results <laughs> in ceremonial magic. Yeah, they don't talk. I know that a lot of, um, particularly maybe the older texts on these things don't talk a lot about intention and they don't talk a lot about being in the wish fulfilled so much. I think they assume it um, for some reason. And look, these things can be powerful. Any kind of magic can be powerful if you are feeling into the wish fulfilled <clears throat> and you're expecting the result. It, it, it really doesn't matter what kind of magic you do. Magic is magic. And there's so many different types of magic out there for everyone, for everyone, because candle magic isn't for everybody. Uh, spirit magic isn't for everybody. Law of attraction isn't for everybody, although I think the majority of people probably practice law of attraction magic these days because it's so it's um, sort of moved into mainstream culture. Uh, but, yeah, give it a go if you want to have a go. <laughs> when is it better to connect with Hecate, full moon or dark moon? Dark moon. Uh, look, it's good to he connect with Hecate any time, but her particular time is the dark moon. So if you're doing a dipnon, which is a Hecatean supper, where you might uh, offer eggs and honey and pomegranate and um, wine to Hecate, uh, the dark moon, new moon is the time to do that, to do the Hecatean supper. Okay, thanks, Weezer. It's amazing when you plant peas on the sign of Scorpio, they grow to resemble a scorpion's tail. Interesting. Interesting. Yes, yes, Joseph, yeah, Hecate is new moon, dark moon, new moon. It's interesting because a lot of um, modern places associate Hecate with full moon, even the tarot deck, uh, the Greek tarot by Juliet Sharman Burke has Hecate as the moon card, um, which is interesting. They, she's often depicted as um, representing the full moon, but really she's the... She's the dark and new moon. Okay, so with eclipses, it's probably the next thing to talk about. That's when often you'll get the blood moon because when you watch an eclipse, if you happen to be able to see a full eclipse, you'll notice that there's a particular point in time when the, the moon looks very red. <laughs> and that's just to do, of course, with the shadowing and the atmosphere and everything. So you, a blood moon is often referred to as the eclipse moon. There are other atmospheric uh, things that can happen that can cause the moon from various times of the year to look different colours. And uh, I think there's traditionally a time in the northern hemisphere and some parts of the northern hemisphere where around August, I think it's August, September or July, August, the moon sometimes can look red. Uh, but it depends on whereabouts you are in the world with that, and that would be a full moon as well. An eclipse moon is like a super cycle. <laughs> it's like you, the moon's doing, it's almost like the moon is doing a cycle in one one, one evening. <laughs> and so you could say that an eclipse energy is very fast energy if you're wanting things to be done really, really fast. Remember that when the moon is being shadowed, by us because we're getting in the way of the moon and the sun that the moon isn't reflecting anything anymore so it's not as powerful at that time some people say that an eclipse moon makes the moon more powerful it can kind of make the moon a little bit more unpredictable which isn't always the best time to do magic <laughs> uh, and it can actually disempower the moon at the particular time too so i would experiment with that um, just to see how it does work out for you if you are doing something at an eclipse because it will probably manifest quite fast um, because of the fact that the moon's going through a cycle pretty much within a really small space of time and the energy could be a bit weird or a bit off because it's not as strong as what it would normally uh, be when we're shadowing it. Uh, but that blinding aspect of it where um, it, it's not really blinding um, because you've got that red colour. But, yeah, it's just it's not like a solar eclipse where you can't look at it because if you do it will send you blind. It's, um, 
it's kind of like the energy actually wanes more with an eclipse energy. So it can be a little bit more unpredictable. <laughs> uh, so the blood moon, so total lunar eclipse when the moon turns reddish, yes, due to the sunlight passing through the Earth's atmosphere. Yep. Okay, crossroad roads aren't common in my area. Oh, okay. Yeah, sometimes it can be hard to find a crossroads. You don't have to have a crossroads if you want to um, do a dipnon or put your hecatane offerings out into nature somewhere. If you don't have a crossroads, do you have a liminal space? So is there a space that sort of goes from one type of area to the next area, like a clearing that then turns into a forest or a wood? Um, so for example, a liminal space could be the ocean, like the shoreline of the ocean is a liminal space because you've got earth turning into water. Uh, you can have that within land as well. So if there's like a park or a clearing and then there's a whole, there's like a forest or a wood, you could leave it there because that's like a liminal space. Okay. 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 An assistant spell in the for the blood moon last November. The outcome was not quite what I expected. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's look. Eclipse moons can be a bit touch and a bit sort of hit or miss, I guess. And um, it's really out out there for experimentation. It could be amazing. The result. Or it could be totally not what you expect. So it's just unpredictable. So it's um, it's something I guess that that you do where it's not such a it wouldn't be such a bad thing if it, if it worked out in a way that wasn't quite as good as you'd want it to or something like that. But it'd be interesting to hear. Um, yes. At the next Q and A, let, let us know. <laughs> okay, um, that's pretty much it with the moon. Apart from I talked about the blood moon, I talked about the cycles, the eclipses, and yes, our blue moon, our super moons. There, of course, is the micro moons as well. But that's when the moon's furthest away from the Earth, so that would be when the moon would appear to be smaller in the sky to as opposed to a supermoon where it looks to be a lot bigger uh, so that couldn't affect the energy but I wouldn't worry about it too much it's not going to have a huge effect on it you're still going to have successful full moon magic even if the moon is further away from the earth than it would be at a supermoon okay wonderful Okay, so for those of you who are new to Mystery Witch School or if you are new to witchcraft and all of this just seems too confusing and you are ready to work in a group of like-minded people, uh, Mystery Witch School 101 Academy is a 12-month course there to teach you energy work, to help you do a little bit of self-exploration so that you can tap into your inner witch and uh, we do work with um, finding your, your inner witch and connecting to your inner witch as well as energy work, connecting to deities and uh, working with the Sabbaths, working with lunar energies, working with Hecate. There's a module on the full moons and new moons and dark moon and Hecate is a part of that as well as magic. So there's candle magic, there's protection magic and uh, financial magic are uh, all there in the course and it's basically just there to teach you the the rudiments of modern witchcraft in the west that is used to not only teach you magic of course but also to teach you how to connect to yourself and feel connected to spirit feel connected to who you really are to remember yourself to remember who you are a lot of the time it's very easy for us to become disconnected and I'm going to be doing a YouTube video um, this week is going to be on reconnecting when you feel like you're pinched off <laughs> because that will happen from time to time where you feel like you're pinched off from 
from something. It's like I'm pinched off from something. You're feeling restless. You're just feeling like something's missing. And it's, it's like you're disconnected or something. And that's because spiritually we've somewhere along the line we've pinched ourselves off from our, who we are and we've pinched ourselves off from our connection to, to nature, connection to, to everything. And so a, a witchcraft practice can bring us back into that connection again and build that connection to ourselves and to the magic within us. So that's what the Mystery Witch School um, Academy is there to do. I will put, there's a link in the description field below this video for those of you watching the replay where you can find more information about that. It's on my website, mysterywitchschool.com. I've also just put it in the chat there as well. And on this week, the YouTube video, the pre-recorded one is going to be about reconnecting because I had that experience uh, yesterday where I felt pinched off and so I was doing my reconnecting so I thought oh, this is probably something other people also experience uh, no matter how long you've been practicing the craft there will be times when you for whatever reason you, you're pinched off and so it's just a matter of doing a few little things to get yourself reconnected again so that's what the theme this week's going to be and I'm also going to do uh, a tapping video on my tapping channel, which is Sandra Inman Tapping. I think that's what it's called. That's Sandra Inman Tapping. It's another YouTube channel that I have on the modality of emotional freedom technique. And that comes into the energy healing that um, I do, which is uh, working with our our assumptions, our energetic assumptions, our beliefs and our thoughts about ourselves and the world that aren't helping us and making us feel really crappy <laughs> and also stopping us from being who we truly are. So I'm also going to be looking at pinching, feeling disconnected and using tapping to help connect there too. So stay tuned for that if you already know about that uh, tapping channel. If you don't know where the tapping channel is, that's okay. Just type in Sandra Eman on YouTube. It should bring it up. And it's also there's a link in the description field uh, Below this video to that channel as well. Okay, just going to jump into the chat one more time. Uh, where do, uh, would it be prudent to set up an altar for the moon? Yeah, you could set up an altar for the moon. You can set up an altar for any aspect of the craft that uh, you could have a sun altar, you could have a lunar altar. Or if you want uh, you want to go smaller, then you can use, um, yes, an idol that's represented by the moon uh, as well. Often we will have a, a solar symbol and a lunar symbol on the altar, but you can have separate altars too if you have the space to do that. Does Hecate work with Saturn energy at all? Some claim she does. Um, not That would be Kronos uh, for Saturn energy, so not Hecate. That would be Kronos. Maybe Hecate would be working with Kronos um, there, but Kronos is really the Saturn energy. Okay. What is an example of a good altar? An altar that you absolutely love, <laughs> that when you go and sit at the altar or stand at it, however you use it, 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 help, it makes you feel like you are connecting to the sacred, that is you are connecting to the goddess and god or whatever that altar is for. Uh, you might want to put tools on your altar. Uh, some people, if you have a permanent altar, like one that you don't move around, uh, some people like to keep their tools on there, like um, anathema, a wand, uh, a cup, a pentagram, statues of the goddess and god, uh, feathers, uh, all sorts of things people will keep on their altar if it's a permanent one. You might have multiple altars uh, that you might have a goddess one and a god one. Um, a lot of people have altars set up to the elements. Um, so in the the four quarters there might be an altar at each quarter and at, at each altar it's representing uh things that represent that element uh for example there might be a candle at the fire altar and there might be feathers at the air altar and and that sort of thing so when it comes to i do have a video on on an altar on my youtube channel so just type in altar um if you go into my actual channel there is a video there on altars I'll, I'll um try to remember to put a link maybe under this video to that video uh, but it, it's just something that you really connect with 
it, the altar is there to serve you, to connect you to your spiritual self. So whatever is going to connect you to that as a tool is going to be good to put on your altar. Yes, so yes, I have done a video on setting up an altar on and not so much on how, yeah, setting it up. I think that's, I did it such a long time. It's got about three years old now, this video. <laughs> it's definitely on my YouTube channel though. So yeah, go have a look for it. Uh, and, and it is there. Okay, just give me a fight space and I'll make it an altar. Absolutely, yes. You can make uh, like a dispatcher. So that's where an altar where you just lay it out. You might carry your things in a bag and then you open up the bag and then you lay everything out. That's another way of using a portable altar. Uh, you can use the floor as an altar. I've used the floor as an altar many times, particularly in outdoor rituals. Uh, just a space, that can be your altar. People use drawers, desk drawers, have altars in their drawers. Uh, often that's a space thing or a privacy thing. Cupboards, yep, use your creativity. <laughs> do you ever do uh, prostration at the altar? Uh, no, I haven't done a lot of prostration practice. I did do a little bit of that when I was doing um, some Buddhist stuff. Uh, I have done it as a connection to the earth. So when you're in a prostrated position, you've got five points um, connected to the earth. So it can be like a connection thing where you've got the crown, um, sorry, your third eye connecting to the floor, palms connecting to the floor, and then you've got the knees and also your toes, I guess, as well, your feet connected there. So the whole of the bottom leg is connected. Uh, so if you take your bottom leg, bottom part of your leg, two legs, there's two points, and then um, you've got your palms, your hand is two other points, and then your third eye is another point. It's like you're doing a pentagram. So working with it in that sense of and that connection to the earth, yeah, uh, rather than it being a subjugation <laughs> um, act like it is in other religions, it's more of a connection to to earth and connecting to the earth. It's not subjugation. In witchcraft, we don't subjugate. It's just, it's just not something we do. Um, and that's not because we're arrogant. <laughs> we're arrogant people. It's just simply because there's no need to, to, to subjugate to anything. Okay, we're human beings. We're here having the experience. We are the divine wanting to have an experience in the world and creating in the world. There's nothing we need to subjugate to. We just need to get on with creating and connecting and um, being respectful and, and honouring and being great grateful to other beings that are helping us, of course. But that's as you would anyone who you work with. Um, it's, it's not a subjugation at all. Okay, totally trying that. Awesome. Yeah, it is pretty awesome because it really does. You do feel like you're connected and it is that pentagram uh, that you're creating. Okay, everyone, have a wonderful week uh, this week. We'll be back uh, next week for another live and um, we'll see you then. Okay, blessed be.